This is what I'm feeling like. Da, 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 da. Let me tell you what I'm feeling like. Da, 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 da. Yo, yo. What up, though, people? Like to welcome you back to the Keep It a C Note podcast. As always, I am your boy Brown. Shout out to everybody that's tuned in. If this your first time tuning in, salute to you. Please do me a favor. Make sure you hit the sub button. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the bell so you can stay notified when we drop new content. And don't be afraid to leave a comment. If you agree with something, you disagree with something, you want to correct me on something, or if you just want to call me an Uber, let me know in the comments. And please share this video with someone that likes to talk sports and entertainment, just like you, so that we can all talk that talk together. Funniest thing that I've seen so far this week. Bill Simmons is reporting that if the Sixers so happen to lose James Harden, if he walks, they're going to trade Tobias Harris to the Washington Wizards for Bradley Bill. Apparently, the Wizards want to get younger. They say Bill and Embiid are homies. They said Embiid allegedly has already told Bill to force his way out of Washington and to come over to Philly. Here's the thing about Bradley Bill. In case you've missed previous episodes, Bradley Bill averages 23 points a game. He just got a Supermax contract. We're in 2023. Bradley Bill hasn't played an 82-game season since, what, the 18-19 season? In the last four seasons, Bradley Bill has only played 60 games one time in four seasons. Yikes. He's making over $200 million. You want to spend two, over close to $500 million on Embiid and Bill? We already know Embiid breaks down in the playoffs. You want to have $500 million on the sideline or hobble with injuries every time the playoffs come around. Bradley Bill is not the answer. And listen, I get it. I know Tobias make a lot of money. He's not worth the money. But at least Tobias is going to be available. I'm just keeping it a C-note. Shout out to the Denver Nuggets. They are now the NBA champions. Shout out Nikola Jokic. He didn't win the regular season MVP this year. But he got the finals MVP. And he set all type of records. Shout out Nikola Jokic. First player in NBA Finals history. The lead his team in points. Rebounding and assists. That boy got busy. That boy answered a lot of questions. I know we still talk. I know we still Joel and B faithfuls. Listen, I would never say take an MVP away from a player. And I'm not going to start the day. Joel earned the MVP. But again, there's really no competition no more. I'm keeping it to see no Jokic. Got one more MVP than him. Has a finals MVP and set all type of records. It's no comparison of those guys. And I had a conversation with my guy. My guy said, yo, I'm sorry to say, but if Embiid was on Denver, 
they would not be playing in the NBA Finals right now. And he's a diehard Embiid fan. So I don't know. I don't know. But we also asked another question before Jokic got the ring. Did he do enough to be considered better than Dirk Nowinski already? Before the ring, I say yes. Now that he's got the ring, I say hell yes. More MVPs than him. More records than him. And he brung the first title to that team. So, you know, shout out Nikola Jokic. Jimmy Buckets, Jimmy Butler, he's been trending. End of the game, most of that game, he really didn't show up. A lot of people saying he disappeared. All the people on social media are now saying playoff Jimmy was a myth. Keep it a scene, though. How y'all feel about Jimmy Butler? Because to me personally, I just think he ran out of gas. I thought he was running out of gas in the Boston series. Like, it's difficult to guard whoever the best wing guy is, try to score all the points, and you playing handicapped because you playing with a bunch of balls. You playing with a team that's not proven. Duncan Robinson, he went from getting that big contract to not even playing at all. So them dudes, even though they unsigned hypes and they, they, they be looking good for the moment, pause. Them dudes ain't proven. And I just think me personally, he looked bad down the stretch of, of that game, but I believe that Jimmy Butler ran out of gas. I'll give him a pass. I would say he carried them through most of the playoff series. And I think it finally caught up to him. Denver had the better team. That's just it. Even if Jimmy was balling out, it was going to be hard to beat them guys. Pause. Especially when them other guys wasn't showing up. So, you know, shout out to Jamal Murray. Jamal Murray bounced back from a major injury. Now he's a champion. It's a lot of talk about Jamal Murray. Is he a top five point guard in the league right now? Is he top seven? Is he even top 10? Whoever's asking that question is just disrespectful. But Jay Williams is trending because Jay Williams recently dropped his top seven point guards in the NBA right now. He has Steph at one, Luka at two, Dame at three, Kyrie at four, Jamal Murray at five, Shea Giltress Alexander at six, and he had Ja Moran at seven. Yikes. Now listen, I know Ja Morant got a lot going on, but to say he's the seventh best point guard in the league right now is a little outrageous. But keep it a scene what's your thoughts on Jay Williams? Top seven point guard list right now. Do you agree with it? Should we call him a Uber? Let me know. I'm going to give you my top seven point guards in the league right now. And nine times out of ten, y'all going to call me a Uber. I know how y'all do. At seven, I got Shea Giltress Alexander. All NBA first team this, this season. He definitely got busy, but I got him at seven. At six, he wasn't on Jay Williams' list, but I got De'Aaron Fox. Most clutch points this year. De'Aaron Fox definitely got busy. At five, I got Jamal Murray. At four, I got Ja Morant. We not going to act goofy with it. At three, I got Dane. At two, I got Luka, and at one, I still got Steph Curry. I think this will be the last season where we go into the season with Steph Curry as the best point guard. I'm just keeping it a C-note. 
I know the biggest thing, pause, is that I didn't have Kyrie as my top seven point guards. I just based my list off of point guards that get busy and you know they make the team better. You know how I feel about Kyrie, pause. I don't think he makes teams better. Um, So, yeah, that's why he wasn't on my list. And listen, Jamal Murray getting a lot of criticism. He ain't the Jamal Murray before injury, but he's he's semi back and he get busy. But Jamal Murray to me is top five point guard just because when I'm looking at my list, maybe besides Steph Curry and Dame Lillard, none of them guys can't really do what Jamal Murray does. He's a point guard that has to share ball handling duties with Jokic. He has to get most of his points off the screens and cutting and moving around. And I think if you take Jamal Murray off that team and you put Steph, that offense still work. Dame, that offense still work because he can shoot. I don't know if that really works with Luka doing what Jamal Murray does. I don't know if that works with De'Aaron Fox as much, even though he kind of does it with Sabonis. So I, I, I would say, yeah, but I don't know. He doesn't shoot as well as Jamal Murray. And Shea Giltress, I don't think if you put him in that spot. And even Kyrie. Some people saying Trey Young, but I don't think them guys can play off the ball like that, share ball handling duties, and be as effective in a game as Jamal Murray is. And Jamal Murray, he's mostly scoring, but he can shoot off screens. He can shoot set. He can post up. He can shoot mid-range. He can shoot the one-footer. So, yeah, I think Jamal Murray is underrated. Um, And, again, he's not Jamal Murray before injury, but he still get busy. He's still effective. What's your thoughts, though, people? Right now, top seven point guards in the league. Who you got? Keep it a C note. Speaking of Ja Morant, NBA Finals are over. Adam Silver, the commissioner, should be making his announcement any day now about the Ja Morant suspension. Some people are saying 50 games. Some people saying... 82 games the whole season. Keep it a C note. Should Ja Morant be suspended? And if so, how many games? I don't think he broke any laws. I know that the commissioner is saying they talked, and I guess he didn't honor his word. But at the end of the day, he still didn't break any laws. I know as much as the NBA is a business, and they want those basketball players to be role models. But the truth is, like Charles Barkley said back in the day, them guys just play basketball. They're not there to be role models. But at the end of the day, if you're going to suspend him, I would say suspend him for 30 games, or how many other games he can't make an all-NBA team or none of that because he don't qualify. If it's 25 games, 30 games, give him that length. Let him go on. He do it again, then you bang him for the whole season. You know what I mean? Maybe more. But what's your thoughts on it? Ja Morant, the verdict is coming any day. Pause. Should he be suspended? If you feel he should be suspended, how many games should he be suspended? Keep it a C note. Let me know. Saquon Barkley recently told reporters he ain't reporting the mandatory camp. He said basically that the NFL, they 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 scheming and scamming. They basically t- tagged them guys, him, Josh Jacobs. Um, Tony Pollard, I guess to keep their value down, they couldn't test the market. So now they won't make more than 10 million this year. Keep it a signal. How y'all feel about the way NFL teams do running backs? Because running backs don't really last long in the NFL. And it seemed like they never want to pay the running backs. 
once in a while you get a running back to slip through the cracks and he's going to get paid. Ty Gurley, Zeke got a little bit of money. I think Derek Henry got, you get guys that get money, but for the most part, they make people jump through hula hoops. Look how they did Le'Veon Bell. I don't know. And and the crazy part about it is growing up, most kids want to either be the quarterback or the running back. And these teams, they devalue the running back. They try to get everything out of you, pause, and then kick you to the side. I don't think it's cool. How y'all feel about the way they doing the running backs in the NFL, acting like they don't want to give them no money? Keep it a C note. Let me know. Last episode, I gave you my top 10 quarterbacks right now in the NFL. Some people called me a hater. Some people sent me Ubers. They said I was crazy. Listen, I just appreciate everybody for engaging. My list is my list. My list ain't for everybody. Again, some people value certain things more than others. And uh, I just put it like this. When a guy says Lamar Jackson won an MVP in 2018, and I say it was in the finals a Super Bowl MVP, again, what do you think right now? Joel Embiid would rather have a regular season MVP or that NBA Finals MVP because that's that's different. That's what separates rings and things from wings and things. But anyway, I'm one of my top 10 running backs in the NFL. I'm giving you 10 through 6 on this episode. Next episode, I give you five through one. Give y'all just enough time to hate. Hate, hate. You know how y'all do. Number 10, I got Tony Pollard. Tony Pollard gets busy. Catch out the backfield, burst of speed. This is his first time as a number one. And ain't he coming off an injury? I got him at number 10. At nine, shout out Saquon Barkley. He got busy, helped the Giants get to the playoffs this past season. He's my number nine running back. Number eight, I got Aaron Jones, Green Bay, solid runner. He catches out the backfield. He gets busy, gets the numbers he can get, and he shares a backfield with somebody. But I definitely got Aaron Jones at eight. At seven, he slipped out of my top five this year. Jonathan Taylor. Now, I know he was hurt most of last season. But that boy don't give me top five running back vibes. So number seven is where he's at. To wrap off this part of my list, at six. CMC, Christian McCaffrey, still getting it through the ground or through the air. Got busy when he got traded to San Fran. Um, Yeah, so that's my six. So, again, I got Tony Pollard at 10, Saquon Barkley at 9, Aaron Jones at 8, Jonathan Taylor at seven. And at six, I got Christian McCaffrey. Five through one will be on the next episode. About to wrap this episode up. Definitely appreciate everybody for tuning in. Again, if this is your first time tuning in, salute to you. Please do me a favor. Make sure you hit the sub button. Everybody that's tuned in. Please hit the like button. Make sure you hit the bell so you can stay notified when we drop new content. Don't be afraid to leave a comment if you agree, disagree, want to correct me on something, 
or if you just want to call me an Uber, let me know in the comments. Just make sure you keep it a C note. And please share this video with somebody like that likes to talk sports and entertainment just like you so that we can all talk that talk together. As always, I am your boy Brown. Please tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell everybody. Keep the C note. I holla at y'all. This is what I'm feeling like. Da, 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 da. Let me tell you what I'm feeling like. Da, 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 da.